to give my a talk on uh, stem cells. So it's, uh, the title is Concept and Application in Articular Cartilage, and the question is chondrogenic cells for cartilage repair. Which cells could be used and what could we expect? Well, if you look upon injuries to articular cartilage and groove plate, they are significant <coughs> clinical problems due to what we know, limited ability to regenerate themselves. Lesion can arise either traumatically or pathologically as osteoarthritis. They may be confined to the vascular layer of articular cartilage, what we call partial thickness lesions, or they may penetrate into the subchondral bone, full thickness cartilage lesions. Partial thickness defects show no spontaneous repair activity, whereas full thickness defects do. When the subchondral bone is involved, two different types of tissue need to be repaired, and one is the vascularized area, and one is the non-vascularized area, and these two areas must be restored if you want the joint function to be maximally returned. Subsequently, the type of system that we wish to elaborate must be selected from existing different alternatives, and a cellular approach, a cell-based approach, a combined approach. A cellular approach aimed to facilitate the repair activity of native cell population, what we say, stem cells. They may consist just of an empty matrix uh, or of a matrix containing biologic signaling agents that will recruit and trigger the differentiation of local stem population into cartilage to chondrocytes. Cell-based approaches can involve free cells, cells in suspensions that we started here in 1987. There could be immature grafts, cells in a matrix scaffold, or cells on a carrier like Macy, or mature graft osteochondral plugs. If immature cells are used, these may even be left to differentiate in vitro in the scaffold to a mature graft in the body, or as an immature graft implanted with a mixture of un- and differentiated cells to mature in vivo. And the cells can be applied, as we heard, either alone or in conjunction with the matrix. So what we are mostly talking about is local focal cartilage lesions, but there is a gliding scale into general loss of cartilage osteoarthritis, and we have to to, to treat these lesions also in the future with cell technologies. One could say that all cartilage repair methods depend on introduction of these chondrogenic cells into the cartilage lesions, and which cells that we should use and for what donor tissue that are to be harvested, we could discuss for months. But in general, there are more chondrogenic cells in young patients. We could see here this young patient, which is actually a rat, we, uh, has a very nice repair, while the old rat has a poor repair. We could see if we don't have any cells, we have a poor repair in this area. If we use fibroblast, also poor repair. But if we use committed chondrocyte, fully differentiated chondrocyte, or mesenchymal stem cells, we could have nice repairs. Maybe you could move it a little because it's lacking some text on the left side. Is it possible to do something with the... Okay. Uh, chondral repair, or also chondral repair is the question, should we use the same cells for both areas, chondrocytes for the chondral part, or MSCs for the bony region, or maybe we should use MSCs for both areas? That is the question. So if we use only mesenchymal stem cells, as has been done by Kaplan and co-workers, they have used the scaffold and put... Uh, the stem cells in this area, or they use just chondrocyte in the scaffold area. And you could see with the stem cells, you get both cartilage repair as well as bone repair. But if you use committed chondrocytes, you have also cartilage in the bony area. So certainly in that sense, it's more interesting to use stem cells for the cartilage repair. Okay. So the stem cells that we are going to talk about is the mesenchymal stem cells. We will not focus on embryonal stem cells, which is a more difficult area to use nowadays. MSCs are present at the concentration of less than 1 in 100 to 500,000 cells in bone marrow aspirates, and subsequently the MSC must be culture expanded to obtain the enough number for repair. But uh, Kutubuka and co-workers, after 16 days, they could harvest 100 million cells from only 3 millimeters of fresh human marrow. So it is possible to expand quite fast and get enough uh, number of cells. 
and you could also use them in the freezer and use them for uh, a time later on. Bone marrow has uh, been considered uh, the source of MSCs, but you could also find the uh, bone marrow uh, cells in the, uh, the MSCs in the adipose tissue, synovium, skeletal muscle, lung, and deciduous teeth. And these findings suggest that the MSC niche may not be restricted to just bone marrow. And that is of interest because then we could do research on a lot of areas. And we have heard earlier this afternoon about cells from the synovium and the cells from um, uh, the fat pad as well as from the bone marrow. Well, important to know is that individual colonies derived from single MSC precursors have also been reported to be heterogeneous in terms of their multilineage differentiation potential. And I think this is important when to use it for cartilage. Because Muragla and co workers they analyzed human bone marrow stromal clones and found that they could differentiate into three main lineages, the osteochondra and adipogenic lineage. All clones but one differentiated into the bone area. One third of the clones differentiated into all three lineages. Most clones displayed osteochondrogenic potential. And this is what certainly we are to rely on when using stem cells. But they never observed oh. Uh, they never observed clones with a differentiation potential limited uh, to the osteoadipo or chondroadipogenic phenotype, nor pure chondrogenic. And this is important because if you want cartilage, and if you want only cartilage, then it's not so good to use the stem cells following this idea. Furthermore, Talheden and co workers they found that in contrast with MSCs, chondrocytes form cartilage only and not bone in the Evivo osteochondrogenic assay. And Carlson, Camilla Carlson and co-workers here in Sargonska uh, Academy, they found that chondrocytes and MSCs from the same patient differentiated and formed different subtypes of cartilage, hyaline from the chondrocytes and a mixed cartilage phenotype from the MSCs. So this is important findings, I think. But in a very uh, recently published paper by uh, Nayadnik and co-workers at American Journal of Sport Medicine, they could show that bone marrow uh, cells in cartilage repair is as effective as chondrocytes for articular cartilage repair. And they say that it's less uh, knee surgery needed because you could use allogenic cells. You don't need to do a second harvest, reduce cost, and minimize donor site morbidity. But still, is this the cartilage that we want? Could it be something else in the future? Because, for example, when I've done drilling on patients or microfracting, I could find that some patients develop chondrocalcinosis of cartilage. And this is question, is there an activi activation of the cells with plasticity, that the cells goes into another lineage? And you remember that there were no pure chondrogenic clones from mesenchymal stem cells. So which cells should we use? Maybe both committed cells from uh, the cartilage and undifferentiated cells from the bone marrow, or bone marrow stem cells for both bone and chondrocytes area. That is the question. Then we have to look a little bit on the chondrocytes, because certainly the chondrocytes are responsible for the unique features of articular cartilage, and they are producing the cartilage that we want. Uh, a fundamental feature of cartilage differentiation in the developing limb in the thetus is the formation of a prechondrogenic cell condensation. So a lot, lot of cells fuse, and in this condensate, they start to produce cartilage. When we do a cell uh, transplantation, we'll also use a large number of cells, which will make up a condensate in this cartilage area to start the chondrogenesis. If we then look into... Uh, embryology, you will find that in the joint formation, there are special stem cells involved, the so-called interzone cells. Furthermore, WNT40 plays a role at the early step in, in the induction of the joint interzone, and GDF5 secreted signal necessary for joint formation produced in response to WNT14. And we heard earlier today about GDF5 involved in the cells in the nucleus in, in, in the intervertebral disc. So certainly these uh, markers are of interest also for cartilage. 
because articular chondrocytes and other joint cells, they derive from GDF5 positive intercellular cells, while shaft and groove by cartilage derive from GDF5 negative cells. And when we looked upon cartilage uh, from the surrounding area of a lesion, we could find that there were progenitor cells which represent the pink spots. So these could be the, uh, the ancestors from the uh, intercellular cells. And we have also designed primers for limited number of key genes expressed during limb and cartilage development. And what we could find in the development is that you will find collagen type 2 A and B, osteocalcin SOX9, CDMP1, WNT14, and CBF1A1. All ye these genes are also expressed when we are using chondrocyte in expansion for the transplantation. And our special interest is expressions of SOX9, important for condensation, and WNT14, critical for joint development. So when we are using cells in expansion to plan a suspension uh, uh, implantation or a implantation with cells on a matrix like hyalograft or similar, we have an imitation of what's happening in embryology. Furthermore, articular cartilage growth is achieved by opposition from the articular surface. And for such a mechanism to occur, a population of stem cells must reside within articular cartilage. And Doutweit and co-workers have looked upon that, and they have found that there are indeed progenitor cells in the su uh, surface zone, in the superficial zone. So in cartilage, we also have what we are looking for, stem cells. So when we are talking about stem cells for cartilage, we could talk about the stem cells within cartilage, but also stem cells in the bone marrow. So it's the cartilage stem cells that we need to induce the chondrogenic safe repair in the cartilage part of an osteochondroid repair if we only want cartilaginous tissue. Furthermore, if you put a piece of cartilage into a cell culture, you will see that cells are trafficking out from the cartilage biopsy. So these are the mostly highly active cells, and it has been shown that these cells have the same markers as the zone in the superficial zone, meaning that those cells could be the cells that we want for, for a better repair, uh, the stem cells. And if you put even something more uh, stimulating, you dope the cells with uh, FGF here, you will he have even uh, better outgrowth from the cartilage. Recent study has also suggested that other fully committed cells are able to de-differentiate into more potent cell and acquire different phenotype under inductive cues. And you can see that the chondrocyte can turn into an osteoblast or into an adipocyte and vice versa. So this is certainly of interest. Song and Chu have shown the same for osteoblast and they call this genetic reprogramming or transdifferentiation. And this is important because if you take one chondrocyte or a few chondrocytes and mix the chondrocytes with a large number of MSCs, you could see how uh, there is a cross-talking between the chondrocyte and the cells, and the cells, by trans transdifferentiation, turn into chondrocyte-like uh, cells. And this could be used uh, in cartilage repair as a one-step te uh, technology that has been re recently developed uh, and is under a clinical trial where you use cells from uh, the cartilage cells, the chondrocytes, bone marrow cells, and you mix them and put them into a scaffold, and then you put the scaffold into the cartilage lesion, start to bear load, and by time you will have a cartilage formation, what we call by cellular synergy. But that's one way. My idea or my, my, my philosophy for, for the future cartilage repair is that you have to have a combination of both uh, the chondrocyte, the committed chondrocytes with the bone marrow cells, two different types of stem cells into different layers, uh, where you put your committed chondrocytes in the cartilage layer, you put the bone marrow uh, stem cells in the bony layer, then you could have a mixture of those cells here which means that you will have a development of the calcified zone because you have, this, uh, 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 you remember that the bone marrow stem cells did express a different types of cartilage compared to uh, uh, the committed chondrocytes. And then you could also have a stimulation of cartilage stem cells within the superficial zone together with the implanted cells to get a better integration. 
But up to date, we have treated what I was talking about, local cartilage defects, and people really want to have more uh, and better uh, treatment for osteoarthritic lesions. So could we do something with this? This looks quite nasty to do with biological repair, but you may do an osteotomy. You put in your scaffold with bone marrow cells, with the chondrocytes in this area. Could that be feasible? Well, per perhaps, but you have to remember that osteoarthritis is an organ disease, meaning that also uh, the disease process will affect uh, the cartilage uh, area uh, that we have implanted. But then we have another way to use the stem cells because furthermore, we, we know that the stem cells uh, could be used as allogenic cells because they evoke very little immune response. But then also, uh, the stem cells secrete bioactive molecules uh, that could uh, be uh, effective uh, for the repair, uh, which is called a trophic activity. So the MSCs appear uh, to be evaluated the mediators for tissue repair as uh, trophostimulators. And this is the next step for the use of the stem cells in cartilage repair, to inject them directly into the joint without any scaffold for osteoarthritic purposes, but more to stimulate the cells within the cartilage, not uh, to expect that the stem cells will produce uh, the repair by the cells. And there are studies going on uh, um, where you could see how this cartilage uh, that has been partly destroyed with the injection of cells could be restituted. So this is something very thrilling to look forward in the future. So finally, one could say that the fundamental question of development biology is how cells dif differentiate, differentiate or stem cells into the right place at the right time, into the right type to contribute to the tissue system or whether they are an integral part. If you better understand how tissues develop, we might also understand how to better engineer the functional equivalence. And finally, the summary is that what we could use for the cartilage repair is the committed cells, the cartilage-derived stem cells, we should uh, expect a cross-talking between seeded cells and stem cells in the superficial zone, inducing trophic factors for seeded cells and a better integration. Mixture of cartilage-derived cells and BM uh, bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells in the cartilage bone interface will transdifferentiation and production of a calcified zone. Bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells in the subchondral bone region and also, which is not so much studied, cell homing, meaning that we could also have a contribution of cells from the surrounding by trafficking into this area. I thank you very much for your attention.